In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to compute z-scores, uh, compute probabilities, etc. Uh, sometimes it's easier to use Excel. I think it's a little little tricky here, so I'd probably use StatCrunch. But if you're wanting to use Excel or if you have to use Excel, here's a video on how to do that. So I'm going to go to Excel first, and we'll just compute one of these right away. So I have a sheet made up, but I'm going to use a, the formula first. Okay, so in Excel you have the formulas tab and the more functions and in st statistical and to compute a z-score you need to go down to what is called um, norm sorry right here norm dist this one right here and if you click that it's going to ask you for some information ask you ask you for the x random variable the mean the standard deviation and then this thing called cumulative which we'll talk about in a second here's the the problem right here it says determine the area under the standard normal curve that lies to the left of this z value. Okay, so we want to know the area or the probability that lies to the left. Okay, well, the x value is going to be the z value because it's a standard normal curve, right? On standard normal curve, the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1, so this would be the x random variable of negative 1.51, actually. In this case, and the mean, like I said, it was zero. Standard deviation is one, and cumulative will always be true because that just adds it all up from the left. And then we hit enter. So this will give me the probability or the area to the left of negative 1.51. Now you can do that and re-enter that each time you want to figure something out, like this one here. I can either re-enter it or go up here and then change my value. So you just got to be a little bit careful of what you're editing to make sure you're getting it right. And then continue on as, as shown. So the reason why the z-score is the x value in this one though is because it, it's on a standard normal curve where the mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. Otherwise, normally, you use the x random variable to find the z-score to get this information. Now let's look at another problem. Okay, in this problem, we're actually looking for the z-score that has an area to the left of 0.29. So we'll go back to our Excel document, and let's go to, again, the formulas, more functions, statistical. Of course, you can always use equals sign, and then start typing this information. I'll do it. Then we're going to go to norm i and v. So we want to go the opposite way here to get the z-score. So we have the probability 0 0.29, that's the area to the left. Again, the mean, since it's a standard normal curve, it's always 0 and standard deviation is 1. And then when I hit enter, it'll give me that z-score, minus 0.55. So that's the z-score for that. Now it always has to be to the left. If it said curve to the right, then you have to find the area to the left by taking 1 minus that probability and using that. So you're going to have to know what to enter in order to get the correct answer. So that's the two basic uh, functions you'll use and then you can use adding, subtracting and all that to figure out more if you'd like. Let's look at my sheet that I created here. You don't have to create a sheet like this but you can if you'd like to. It's just a little, a little involved. But what I've done here is I've created to calculate a z-score given a random variable, a mean, and a standard deviation. Because this is the formula in the book. This is, gives you a z-score if you have the random variable, the mean, and the standard deviation. So I made the red, this red because I don't ever want to change that, and that's my formula. So basically my formula just says this box minus this box divided by this one. And you can see it, the parentheses have to be on the numerator to do that. So now if I want to find z-scores like shown in this problem here, all I do is I just type, oh, this isn't z-score, it's a probability, sorry. I type in my random variable, which is the going to be the z-score here, negative 0.64. I type in the mean, 0, and standard deviation, 1, and of course the z-score comes back to be negative 0.64. Well, I want the area, and you'll notice that I have that area over here. It's already calculated. I, ca I made a cell over here using that norm dis to do that. 
and all I did is put my values in there. The first one was the x value, the random variable. The second was the mean. The third was the standard deviation. And then the fourth says true. So this one will calculate, use that information to calculate the probability or area to the left of that z-score. So this does it automatically. And to the right of that z-score, well remember, to the left, and all the way to the right would be completely 1, so they both have to add up to 1, so all I did is take 1 minus this score to get to the right of the z-score. So not too hard. So now every time I fill this out, it gives me a z-score and the area to the left and right. So I can finish all of these problems then. What's the next one? Uh, to the left of negative 0.56, I just change this, negative 0.56, and again, 0.287, so, so 0.2877, yep, that's what it was. what it was. So I can finish those problems quite easily by just inserting this information here. Let's look at another problem. Here's one I didn't talk about before. This is finding the area that lies between, say, two z-scores. Let's look at this example here. Or maybe let's look at c. I want to find the area that's between these two. Well, remember, the area that's between two z-scores is something like this. z2 is on the right, and then z1 here is on the left. And you want to find the area. Well, the, what the probability does for area, it finds all the way to the left, right? So let me show a picture here. So on here you can see that the first one finds all the way to the left, finds all the way to the left, and to find the in intermediate value in between here, we have to subtract z2 area and take off the z1 area. So that's what we got to do. We got to find the area to the left of z2 and then subtract off the area to the left of z1. Well, that's what I have I have created here. I find z1 score pretty much the same way over here with this formula. I have a new x random variable 1 according to the z1 score and I have a mean and standard deviation. So I take the x minus the mean over the standard deviation to get this box, to get this box. And I do the same thing for this one. I have a new x2 random variable because you're finding a new z score for the second one and a mean and standard deviation. And that allows me to find an area between them because all I do is just subtract. I take the normal distribution and find to the left of the x2. That's what I do first, right? So z2, I find all this area, so I use that one. And then I go to the second one and use the z1 score, this for random variable x1, that finds the area to the left of this, and I just subtract them. And now I can quickly find the area of these two. So this is z1, because to the left, that's z2 to the right. So negative 0.96 and 1.61. Negative 0.96, 1.61 are the two values. And then what was the mean? In, it's under a standard normal curve, so I need just 0 here. And 1 here for the standard deviation. And then this would be the area between them. And that would be 0.7778, and that's what I have, 0.77777. So I just round up. So this, we fill in this information here with the, this is the leftmost one all the time. This is the rightmost one. And then the mean and standard deviation. Now I also created something on that to figure out the z-score given a probability. So we can use that as well. If I slide down here, this one, you give the probability, the mean and standard deviation, it'll give you the z-score. So the probability here is 0.13. The mean, of course, is again 0 and standard deviation is 1. And then it gives me a z-score of negative 1.12. Point, or 6, so it rounds up to negative, point, negative 1.13. Now how do I get that to do that? Well that again is the function norm iv, inv. So I go in there and type equals norm dot inv. I put the probability box, comma, the mean, comma, the standard deviation, and then that returns the z-score. Let's try another. 
Here's a good example with uh, different mean and standard deviation answering some questions here. So we have a mean of 63.6 seconds and a standard deviation of 2.9 seconds and it wants us to answer this information. What is the probability that a randomly selected car will get through the drive through in less than 59.8 seconds? Okay, so let's go put our information in here. We have 63.6 and 29 or 2.9. So we can just use this one, the 63.6 and the 2.9. I think that's what it was, right? Yep, and then what we want to do is find out less than 59.8 seconds. That would be the this one here, 59.8. We have a z-score of negative 1.31, and the probability of that happening is 0 0.095. And that's it right there, 0 0.095. So this information is quickly gathered by the worksheet. Let's try another one. What is the probability that a random selected car will spend more than 70 seconds in the drive through So I have the same information here. But we want more than 70 seconds, so I put 70 as the random variable. But remember, this always gives to the left, or less than. That's what this was, right? To the left, end. more would have been to the right, so that's the percent that happens. 0 0.01366, 0 0.0137. So you can see why I made all these things. It's very quick, and we just insert the data and quickly change it, and these things are updated. Continuing down, what proportion of the cars spend 59.8 and 70 seconds through the drive through 59.8 and 70. Well, that's when we need to go here, 59.8. It's the first one, and 70 is the second one. My mean is 63.6, and my standard deviation is 2.9. So the area between them is 0.89. One two point eight nine one two nine so point eight nine one three correct so again just quickly making these things knowing which one you want to use I've made it for all different circumstances you can quickly gather this information with this Excel document.